Good morning, class three and class four. Welcome to your reading session for today. So today we are going to continue with our story, Titus Rules OK. So today I'd just like you to read chapter three. So if you want to pause me while you do that and then come back and I'll go through the questions with you. OK, so number one, why did the Queen want John to leave Titus on the grass? What was the funny feeling that the Queen had? How do you think the Queen felt about the Prime Minister calling her? Why was Prissy worried? What trick did Titus do that earned him a chocolate digestive? Pause me now while you have a go at these and come back when you are ready. OK, your answers are there for you. So the Queen wanted John to leave Titus on the grass because she wanted to come down and praise him for going to the toilet outside. The funny feeling she had was that Titus was going to be a very special dog. Um, you know, it, it's up to you how you think the Queen felt, but I put that I thought she was annoyed, fed up, because she says she wishes she wasn't continuously pestered by politicians ringing up. And Prissy was worried because Titus had been gone for a long time and she was worried he had got himself into trouble. And then the trick was that he sat bolt upright on his bottom and held his paws up in front of him. Hope you found those OK, guys. Any problems, just send me an email. Well, welcome, Year 4, to your maths for today. Today we are going to explore equivalent fractions. Same as it has been uh, the rest of the time, you're going to watch the video. Don't pause it when the man tells you to because I've put your questions at the end. OK? So Hello and welcome to our second lesson about fractions. Today, we're going to look at the idea of equivalent fractions. We're going to spend some time now looking at that word, equivalent. It's quite a complicated word, isn't it? We, we can use it not just in maths, it's not just a maths word, um, but it's not an everyday word. But can we see a more common maths word at the beginning? We can see equal, can't we, nearly, or equi, which means the maths word is equal, which we know means the same. So today we're going to be looking at pairs of fractions, sometimes three fractions, that are equivalent. That means they're the same value. So here we've got the fraction that we think very comfortable with now. And in fact, this is how we started yesterday's lesson. So we'll just have a quick recap. The four in one quarter is the denominator. Isn't it? it means we're dealing with four equal parts in this case. And one, the top number is the numerator. And it's how many parts we're interested in, how many parts we're using. And we talked yesterday about how a diagram like that doesn't in fact show a quarter because the four parts aren't equal. And those that would be a quarter. And of course, the quarter doesn't have to be shown just with the first uh, box shaded. It could be any of any of the four. OK, we're now going to look at another fraction, two eighths. And as we're looking at these fractions in this lesson, today try to think about the relationships between the numerators so the relationships between one and two in this case and the denominators four and eight and see if you spot any patterns now i've drawn eight is that diagram going to help me compare one quarter and two eighths no because my diagram of eight isn't the same size so let's make it the same the same length then then we'll be able to compare and i've got my eight equal parts and i'm going to shade in two of them what do you notice? We might be able to see it now. If we push the two uh, bar models together, we can very clearly see that one quarter is equivalent to two eighths, so it's equal to two eighths. So if these were two chocolate bars and you had a quarter of one of your bar and your friend had two eighths of her bar, well, you've eaten the same amount, as long as they were the same chocolate bars, of course. Um, you've eaten one quarter, she's eaten two eighths, they are the same. They are equal. They are the same as each other. And we can write it the other way around, of course. Two eighths is equivalent to one quarter. You have a go at answering that question. Is six ninths equivalent to two thirds? I'll start you off. There's a drawing of six ninths. OK, so hopefully you drew, you copied that drawing of six ninths and shared in six of the pieces. And then you drew two thirds in the total of your bar the total length of your bar was the same for both. And then you can see, if we push them together, yes, six ninths is equivalent to two thirds, which means, of course, two thirds is equivalent to six ninths. Again, think about that relationship. 
between the numerators, so 2 and 6 here, and the denominators, 3 and 9. Possibly think about your multiplication tables as you're trying to spot these patterns. So now we've got an activity, odd one out. So two of the three are equivalent and one is not. Use some bar model drawings. Remember, making sure the bars are the same length as each other to spot the odd one out. So that will be my drawing of four ninths. And there's six ninths. And there's four sixths. So if we push them together, we can see that four ninths is the odd one out because it's smaller than six ninths and four sixths. But six ninths and four six are equivalent. So four nines is the odd one out there. This is a fractions wall, and you may well have seen one uh, fractions wall like this before in school. Fractions walls are brilliant for spotting equivalent fractions, and that's what I'd like you to do now, but I'll just show you how to do it. I've picked out a few equivalent fractions. So you can see here, I've started with one and sixth, I've got on my sixth line, the sixth row, um, I've got one six and I've looked down, it's equivalent to two twelfths. Okay, I could go down to my thirds, I can see I've got two thirds and I've looked down, you might want to do this with a ruler or a piece of paper. Um, two thirds is equivalent to six ninths and we saw that um, a few minutes ago. And we could do the same thing, we've gone three quarters is equivalent to six eighths and we could keep going down actually. And we could also see that that's equivalent to nine twelfths. So three quarters, six eighths, nine twelfths, it is three different ways of writing the same value. So have a go at spotting some equivalent fractions using the fractions wall. You may have come across this type of question before and always sometimes never question where you're given a statement and you've got to say is it always true, sometimes true or never true. And here we've got our statement, the greater the numerator, the greater the fraction. It's really important when we're doing this type of problem that we think of different examples to test whether it's always, sometimes or never. So first of all, I'm going to pick these fractions because as we can see, we've got a numerator of one, we've got a unit fraction, and we've got a numerator of four, a non-unit fraction. So this is testing the statement. But of course here, the denominators are the same. So I'll draw my one seventh, and I'll draw my four sevenths, and you've probably had an idea before I even drew that because you could see in your mind the idea of one seventh and four sevenths. So at the moment it looks like, yes, it's always true, doesn't it? The greater the numerator, the greater the fraction. However, we tested there using the same denominator. So what happens if we introduce different denominators? So here we've got one third and two tenths. Well, if that's always true, two tenths should be the bigger fraction, shouldn't it? It should be the greater fraction. Let's have a look one third. So now I'm going to draw my two tenths. I've got to make sure my bar's the same size overall. And you can see two tenths is quite a bit smaller than one third. So even though there's a two there in the as the numerator in our two tenths, two tenths is a smaller fraction. So what would we say for that statement? It's sometimes true, isn't it? The first example, it was true, but the second wasn't. So that means it must be sometimes true. If you've got the White Rose Maths worksheet resource for this lesson, uh, Equivalent Fractions 1, you're now ready to have a go at the questions. If not, you can have a go at the questions available on the BBC Bite Size website. So your questions are there for you guys. Any problems with those, just send me an email. Pause me now while you have a go and then come back and we will go through the answers. OK, there are the answers. If you're looking at those and a bit confused still, please feel free to send me an email and we'll go through them together. OK, so on to your writing for today. Good morning, class three and class four. We're on Tuesday, the 7th of July, and I'm here, Miss Cunnington, for your reading. Uh, sorry, for your writing lesson again. And today we're going to have a look at writing a diary entry in the role of Prince Philip. So using your understanding of him yesterday, that will help us with our diary entry today. OK, so I'm not going to give you too much input here for writing a diary entry because I'm, I'm pretty confident that you guys are great at this. And this is a way of helping us understand what's happening so far in the story that you're reading for Titus Rules OK. And 
um, it just helps us really get into the role of another character. Okay, you guys have loved doing these in class, so I thought it would be a nice activity for you to have a go at doing whilst you're reading this book. So, to help get you into the right frame of mind, I've just got some questions here to help you think about it. So, so far, think about what's happened in the story and what you've read. What do we know about Prince Philip? How does he feel about the Queen's Corgis? What has happened so far in the story? And Prince Philip has a diary and has a few days to catch up on. So write everything that's happened so far in the story and how you feel about it. Now, in purple to the side, you can see that I've given you a diary toolkit. So just some things to help remind you of what you need to include when you're writing a diary and techniques to help you make it as effective as it can be for the reader. So remember to start with Dear Diary. Write in chronological order, so think about the events that have happened and write them in that order. So if you were to summarise the events that have happened in the story so far, write them in that order. Explain how you felt at different points. And make sure you write in first person, so that's using the pronouns I and me. And also use that present perfect tense. So um, using words like have been. Okay, so good luck with this, guys. This can be done in your exercise book and have fun. Bye.